Hey everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well and welcome to my film and TV channel. I hope you enjoy what I've got for you today and please check out uh, as you're watching this uh, little links on screen as well for different things on my uh, Facebook and Twitter and of course my uh, football channel as well. And, uh, please, all your comments are very welcome. Just let us know and push that subscribe button. Don't forget, please push the subscribe button. Make sure your notification is set to public as well if you want to know when uh, these vlogs are coming out. Push that notification button as well. So, anyway, please, please enjoy. Right, today we're going to have a look at a little series on Netflix. Yes, this is called Post Mortem No One Dies in Scans. Yes, sir. Uh, Norwegian language, uh, Netfields, Net, Netfields, Netflix, Netflix original drama television series. So you can watch it in subtitles, that's not a problem, or you can have it dubbed. And uh, I'll be honest with you, if you have it dubbed, it's not bad. Uh, you do get some dodgy acting on the dubbed side or when you have some of these Netflix series. But uh, this is quite a good one. This is this is very watchable, dubbed as well as in its original subtitles, if you don't mind that. So six episodes we've got of this. What's it about? Well... I think Leva that I have watched this, I forgot how to pronounce the name now, Leave Hall Hallingen is declared dead. Uh, hours later on the forensic table, she suddenly awakes up with a sudden urge for blood. Yeah, that's probably after some guy stuck a scalpel near her heart, but hey, there you go. Meanwhile, her brother, Odd, Odd uh, tries to keep the family-driven funeral home afloat, but there simply aren't enough people dying in the small Norwegian town of Skans. Yeah, they'd never have a co-op funeral parlour there, would they? When, Le when Leaves' blood first keeps intensifying, she soon realises that this newfound urge can actually solve her brother's problem. Leave now has to learn to control her new dark nature and decides she's willing to sacrifice people's lives for her own survival and the survival of the family business. Stars, please excuse my pronunciations, uh, Catherine Thorberg Johansson as Leave Hall Hallingen, Elias Holman Sorensen as Odd Hallingen, Andre Sorum as Reinert, Kim Fairchild as Judith and Sarah Karami as Rose and a few others as well. Is there any good? Well, the only thing we've got at the moment, we've had a few critics reviews, they're quite favourable, I've been having a look at those. Internet Movie Database, Joe Public, you and me, the public that's watched this, 1,079 reviews, and it's getting an average of 7.1 out of 10, so that's not bad, is it? That's, that's a good score. And of those 1,079 people who've left a, a review and a score, 958 scored it six or more so almost 90 percent 89 percent of people uh, gave this quite a positive review quite a positive score so that all bodes well so there you go my little thoughts yeah i think you could probably gather whether watching dubbed or subtitles i think this is very very watchable there uh, just for convenience i did watch it dubbed because sometimes i i sort of do other bits and pieces as well so obviously i don't really have time to 100% uh, concentrate on the screen to read subtitles so I did watch the dub version but as I said the acting stood up pretty well uh, very watchable only six episodes which uh, is nice uh, I must admit when I started to watch this I wasn't aware of how many episodes there were so I just started watching episode after episode and then was a little wee bit disappointed when we got to the end of uh, episode six and obviously it went back to the sort of menu there's no episode seven but there you go it's just about just about right just about the right level and right interest level for the first season i mean the dark comedy which is what it is basically if you don't like dark comedies then probably stay clear of this uh, works most of the time yes it's very adequate it's got some good characters some good chemistry on on screen with the between the police and the various characters in this and Catherine thorborg johansson i don't know how she stands up in her own language but as far as uh, looking and the dub version of her uh, leads the line very well in this uh, production I do find, as you probably, I don't do a lot of reviews on Netflix dub things because, to be honest with you, I find them a little bit weak. I've, I've started to watch quite a few over uh, the last two or three years and just, just stopped. Just basically after uh, half an hour of episode one or even up to, say, episode two, I've just stopped watching them. I find, I find them a bit weak, to be honest with you, and a bit, a bit annoying. Uh, but obviously, things like Ragnarok aside, which was a, a rare exception, 
as I say, I do find them a bit weak. And similar to this series, uh, Ragnarok sort of grabbed my attention very early doors with what happened. And this did exactly the same from episode one. It sort of drags you in very quickly into the story. And it did manage to keep my interest uh, throughout the limited six, uh, six episode series. I'm not saying I've not seen similar before. Of course, yeah, I've, I've watched a lot of stuff. I've watched a lot of TV. I've watched a lot of films. There's nothing particularly clever or different about uh, this vampire variant, which is what it is. I think you know that from the synopsis. You know that quite early, but it's uh, it's quirky enough to be enough above average watch uh, for me. So I did I did enjoy it. As I said, it's nothing nothing new particularly, nothing groundbreaking. But uh, yeah, I think the chemistry and it were the actual episodes and the actual storyline sort of worked in a, in a nice simple way. It ended well as well. It was a good ending. Uh, it left it open, of course, for a series two, but it actually finished it off. If it was only going to be one series, it finished it off nicely. It nicely packaged it up, so it didn't didn't do any harm. I like that. I don't like these cliff too many cliffhangers. Uh, you know, any any series can be continued uh, onwards, uh, no matter how you finish how you finish it. So, yeah, I was quite happy with the ending. It sort of left it open, but as I said, if, it, if they're only going to do one series, which would be a shame, then it sort of finishes it off nicely. To binge or not to binge? Well, I would say to binge with this one. As I said, I watched it probably over the course of a late morning afternoon. So, yeah, it's definitely definitely one to binge. But as uh, if you do binge, it is, uh, you may be like me, feel it's a bit over far too soon, unfortunately. So my rating, yeah, I'm going to give it a good healthy rating, similar to the Internet Movie Database. I'm going to give it a very, very watchable 7 out of 10. I, I did enjoy it and hope there's hope there's more to come. Anyway, let me know what you think if you get to watch this uh, little mini-series on Netflix. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day. Have a great one. Catch yourselves, catch your friends, look at your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. To me here again on the Film and TV channel. Perhaps have a flit across. Have a look at my football channel, my Citizen channel, and my team, Manchester City. Whatever it is, I only ever ask one thing. Please stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.